All right, chapter one, the first humans. Um, on page 18, I had you read the page about Lewis B. and Mary Nicole Leakey. And the significance of that is that they discovered the oldest human remains in East Africa, specifically in the Old Duvai Gorge. And the Old Duvai Gorge, if you look at the map on page 18, it is near Lake Victoria in South Central Africa. And up to this point, this was the oldest human being um, or human-like remains that were found. Um, however, things, older things have been found as well. Um, in Ethiopia, they found human remains that were 154 to 160,000 years old. Um, they found a hand axe in Kenya just last September that was anywhere from um, 1.5 to 1.8 million years old. And so this seems to be the area where they have discovered things that, that lead us to believe that East Africa is the beginnings of human beings. All right, so we're going to talk about some prehistoric times. And for you to understand when I mean prehistoric or we talk about prehistory, it is really the time before written records were actually kept and before writing was actually developed. So when we talk about prehistoric times, it's before writing. I am a big fan of the Far Side cartoons, and so this one kind of fits with the prehistory idea. It says, of course, prehistoric neighborhoods always had that one family whose front yard was strewn with old mammoth remains. So, of course, equating it to modern day homes that have a lot of junk in their yards. All right, so if we don't have writing, how do we discover what life was like hundreds, thousands, millions of years ago? Well, we use things like science, and in particular, archaeology, anthropology, um, geology, um, botany, zoology, all those kinds of things. So, archaeology is the study of past societies. Um, based on what they left behind. When you do that, we use artifacts. So we're talking about anything that's man-made, a bowl, a knife, a weapon, anything that would be used that is man-made. Anthropology is a study of human life and culture. And knowing that, because we study human life, we're dealing with live you know, human beings and animals, plants, and so if they leave an impression or a remnant um, in the Earth's crust, those are fossils. So anthropologists tend to use those. Um, they can use artifacts, but they're more into um, the human life and how that's changed versus how a weapon has changed. So again, another Far Side cartoon is anthropologists, anthropologists. And you can see that this primitive group of people um, is going to be studied by anthropologists, and so they're putting away all their technology, their VCRs, their television and lamps and so forth because apparently they think they don't have them. All right, as I mentioned, some other use, useful scientists are zoologists studying animals, geologists studying rocks and soil, and botanists, of course, studying plants. So between those five scientists, we can get a pretty accurate idea of what life was like. Technology has played a huge role in this, and this just shows you right down here how they have found a skeleton, a skull in particular here, and based on um, what they, where they can see as far as wear and tear, they then put skin back on it and typical, you know, muscle, fat, whatever it looks like it had, and then hair, and get a pretty good idea of what they believe this guy looked like. And this is just an example of what they use with the remains of an explorer by the name of Copernicus. But we can do that with just about anything. So technology really has helped us figure out and put the pieces of the puzzle together from the past. All right, so how do we date those artifacts and fossils? Um, the first thing and the most common thing is by using radiocarbon dating, the C14 that's found in all living things. C14 stops being produced once something dies, and the half-life is determined. We know the exact length of the half-life. So in other words, if something dies now, how long, how many years will half of that carbon exist? 
So if something, you know, is so many thousands of years old, they can determine that how much carbon's in it and how old it is. You can see the half-life chart on page 20, so that can kind of give you an idea how old things can be. Because C14 is no longer measurable after 50,000 years, you have to have other methods of dating. So the next one dates things up to 200,000 years old, and that's called thermoluminescence dating. And this measures the light that is around an object that they find in the soil, and that's due to electrons that are trapped there, and so they can determine it based on that. We also can use DNA sampling. We can use analysis of hair, plant tissues, blood, anything that we can find. Of course, they can do that with as well as DNA for humans. We're going to talk about the evolution of human beings. And again, this is just a view from the textbook, from history standpoint, um, not creation as other people or religious people may believe in. So it's just information. It doesn't mean you have to believe in this. So we're going to talk about how human beings evolved. The first group of people were called the hominids. And the hominids were upright. They walked upright and they made very simple tools. The first type was called Australopithecines, and these were southern apes, and they are the earliest group of people that were human-like. Again, I have a far side cartoon that says primitive spelling bees, cave, C-A-V-E, cave. The next guy in line says, oh sure, I'll probably get Australopithecus, obviously making fun at how difficult this particular word is. All right. This group of hominids existed three to four million years ago, discovered by Donald Johansson, so you need to know him, so he's highlighted pink. Um, it was discovered mostly in Africa, in south and east part of Africa, and they also discovered another type of hominid there, the Kenyan Kenyanthropus, and that was of course found in Kenya, three and a half million years old. Um, the hominids, human-like, but still very animal-like, and you can kind of see similarities, yet very, very primitive. Not necessarily a good-looking dude. The next phase was the Homo erectus, and Homo erectus is Latin meaning upright human being. These people existed one and a half million years ago, and what differentiated them from the hominids is their use of large and more varied tools. They also were the first group of people to learn to use fire. And so that was obviously much more um, intellectual than previous groups. And these people migrated from Africa to Europe and to Asia. And page 22 shows you a map of the migration. And so you can look at that and you can see that um, North America and South America are probably the newest, quote unquote, newest um, areas where humans migrated to. This picture here just gives you a good example of what we believe the Homo erectus to look like. Um, you can see very caveman-ish, um, wide broad faces, the big eyebrow ridges, hairy, um, little or short neck, big jaws, all those things that we associate with cavemen. The next group are Homo sapiens, and this is considered to be wise human being, and they existed 250,000 years ago, and there were two subgroups. The first one are Neanderthals, and again, they lived in Europe mostly and also the Middle East between 30,000 and 10,000 BC. The reason why they're called Neanderthals is because they were originally located near the Neander Valley in Germany, and so that's highlighted green, so we will be labeling that on our map. And again, they were found in East um, or Southwest Asia and Europe. They were the first human beings to bury their dead. What that says about them is that they probably believe in an afterlife of some sort, and so they were the first ones to carefully do that. And they made clothes, and they needed to because they lived in cooler climates like Germany where they needed to make clothes from animal skins. All right, what did they look like? They had very powerful builds, short and stocky. Um, they had heavy jaws, which means it's just very wide. You can look at this picture here and see very wide jaws because they had to eat meat raw. Thick eyebrow bridges, you can, or ridges, you can see right here, much more of a bigger pronounced ridge than what we have in this modern skull. Much larger noses, you can see the holes are much larger, 
probably needed to use their sense of smell more than we do, and they just looked like the typical caveman. The Homo sapiens sapiens just means wise, wise human beings. And again, those were just much more intelligent based on the things that they created in life that they lived. Um, they are also called the Cro-Magnon, found in Africa between 150 and 200,000 years ago. They are the first group of people that we believe are more anatomically similar to what we look like today. And they migrated out of Africa about 100,000 years ago. They had much better tools and weapons than previous groups of people. They could not write, but they were um, artists. And they drew a lot of very primitive drawings, of course, of, of what life was like. So we learned a lot from the artwork. They also had a little bit of jewelry from ivory. And that's because, of course, they're in Africa or painted pebbles. And they were first to create a flute. And it basically looks like what I would consider to be um, a recorder that you use probably in third, fourth, fifth grade in elementary music. And it just has holes in it. So first flutes created by the Homo sapiens sapiens. All right, so the spread of Homo sapiens sapiens, which replaced all the Neanderthals by 30,000 BC, this took tens of thousands of years to move around the world. And we believe all humans belong to that same subgroup of human beings. And if you look at the map on, on page 22, you can see the time frame that we're talking here. So we believe that people lived um, in Africa 150 to 200,000 years ago, then in the Middle East 100,000 years ago, and then they went to Australia 50,000 years ago, up to Europe 40,000 years ago, to, I would consider, Eastern Asia, across the land bridge, um, to Alaska 15,000 years ago, south down to Canada and North America 12,000 years ago, and then south, South Africa 10,000 years ago. So you can see how different time periods and how long it actually took to go from Africa to all of the continents that humans lived on today.